Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for June 28, 2024. Well, today we have a really big day, and I have to tell you, yesterday was very interesting. Although that we had significant data suggesting that the economy is slowing, that the consumers are under stress and they are slowing, the market just shrugged, shrugged it off as ho-hum. So today, boy, we really could see some interesting volatility in the market as we go into this economic number on inflation. Will it be bullish? Will it be bearish? Is it possible we could have another ho-hum day with everyone kind of thinking about the 4th of July and uh, really signing off for a period of time? Who knows? But before we move on, how about we take a look at what happened overnight? Well, first off, we had an interesting move last night. Um, we had Asian markets rebounding back higher. As a matter of fact, we saw Japan, they had um, industrial production grow at 2.8% according to their numbers. Um, the expectation was for 2%, but at the same time, oh my goodness, at the same time, we saw their inflation increase um, accelerated to 2.3 percent up from 2.2 in May and we saw the yen weaken against the dollar in fact it's coming in at its lowest level was 161 and a quarter against the um, the US dollar um, and Wow um, really falling here they've got a major problem with their debt and uh, continue to show some interesting issues there. If we look across the board, however, green across the board um, coming up and uh, the Nikkei was the um, biggest gainer on the day up 6.61%. Uh, European markets um, have a little bit of a mix here this morning. Um, we know what's going on over there in France and the CAC is a little bit lower as some polling data um, really seemed to help out um, um, that uh, new election regime, regime maybe coming in. Um, and we have the DAX decidedly bullish this morning and the FTSE also moving to the upside. So kind of a mix in data there today. Um, if we take a look beyond that here in the US, we're green across the board trying to um, um, have some, you know, real good confidence heading into this number today. As a matter of fact, the, the NASDAQ is pushing pretty hard here this morning, up 0.42%. So keep an eye on that. We'll see how that goes throughout the morning. Let's take a look at um, our oil this morning. Oil um, trying to move higher. XLE, let's take a look here. Why is oil moving higher? Well, oil is moving higher because of a major concern of an expanding war in the Middle East. Israel and Hezbollah, uh, Lebanon, um, coming into uh, focus here as a n the next potential threat in the Middle East. And that concern is raising um, um, oil prices here. Now, this is combating the weakness that we see in the U.S. consumer. Um, just a major concern about what's going on um, over there. So we're seeing those oil prices come up. A break of the downtrend here. Rested, consolidated, holding that higher low. And you can see we have a little bit of bullishness coming into those oil sector stocks this morning. So we've got um, oil up 64 cents a barrel at 82.38. Uh, Brent crude is up 59 cents a barrel at 85.02 a barrel. And natural gas is moving a little bit higher this morning as well, trying to rebound off of these recent lows. If we take a look at our precious metals, well, we've got an interesting thing going on here this morning. We've got gold. Uh, gold futures this morning are higher by um, another $10 an ounce. Um, we were up sharply yesterday on gold, really trying to rebound. Now, it's interesting that that is occurring, but I th uh, because of what we see here in the dollar, the dollar 
um, saw some weakness yesterday and that made sense that gold was moving up but then as it rallied throughout the day we really should have seen gold resting or pulling back so my guess is what's happening here there's a um, concern there's concern uh, with the Middle East there's concern with um, um, a slowing economy um, not just here but as Nike mentioned um, major weakness over there in China and you can see Nike um, uh, having a rough day on their earnings report um, suggesting that sales are going to fall by 10% um, and they did cite China weakness as a major problem for them so we'll have to keep an eye on that um, silver prices are up just a little bit this morning. Copper's up, platinum and palladium uh, moving to the upside. And we have a Bitcoin trying to stay green here on the day, up $10 a coin here this morning. Boy, it's been a long time since I haven't seen this be triple digits in one direction or another. But uh, mostly green in the cryptos here this morning. If we take a look at our bond prices, bond prices have moved up just ever so slightly. We have the 10 year or two year holding in there at 4.72%, but the 10s moved up a little bit at 4.31% in the 30s at 4.45 percent just with that concern of that data that's coming here in a little while so what does all that mean for the day well how about we settle in let's buckle up let's get ready for the friday edition of the morning market prep video Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. Happy Friday, everyone. Let's take a look at these charts and let's see if we can gain a little bit of information about how we may want to approach the market for today. Um, remember, we want to shake off a little bit of bias. We want to look at the charts for what they are, not for what we want them to be. First off, when we take a look at the diamonds here, um, it's undeniable here, a break of the downtrend here in the chart and that possibility that we're holding a higher low here in the diamonds is a bullish potential setup. Notice we're still holding this support here in the chart. So pretty good moves here overall in the diamonds. If the bulls can find inspiration in today's data, pushing on up, the first thing I wanna do is see if we can break above that big black candle. Past that, we're gonna be looking at this resistance in the chart, and then we'll start moving higher in this uh, chart in here to see whether or not we can come back up here and test this resistance area. Now, this resistance area, relatively strong here in the chart, but breaking through that, then we're looking up here and possible blue sky highs in the diamonds. Now on the other side, if the bears were to find inspiration today, you could see we could make a pretty quick trip back to the downside here. Um, failing this support level here in the chart is where we would wanna be watching first. And if we were to drop down through here, I suspect there's a pretty good chance we'll be moving um, quickly um, down toward these levels here in the chart. Now we have a nice little upside trend right here that could hold that downside trend support and the support right across here could hold as well. So it's going to be a critical thing if the bears do um, um, find inspiration that this area right in here holds. A failure through there could be fatal. Uh, for the market for a short period of time. Noticing here on our moving averages, we're still holding above our 50 day, but if we were to crack down below some of these areas in here, notice that that 50 day could be challenged, 50 day moving average, so we'll wanna watch that carefully. If we take a look at our SPY, once again, you look at that SPY chart, there's nothing in there that's bearish in any way, shape, or form. And if those bulls can continue to find inspiration, you can see we're pushing hard here today, trying to get this to move to the upside. And if they can push on through right here, blue sky highs, and I think there's every reason to believe that could happen on the data today if those bulls find inspiration. As a matter of fact, I think we can gap and run um, above that um, this morning. If the bears, however, were to find inspiration, 
and push start pushing down, I would look for a little price level right in here first to see if we can hold that. Failing through there, we're probably coming back into this trend and price support in the chart. Now the concern would really start to be um, increased in the market if um, the SPY breaks its trend and starts coming down into here because then we have that risk of this gap fill and um, we'll start seeking some lower levels here in the market. If we take a look at our moving averages, please keep in mind that we would have to move dramatically lower here on um, the SPY just to come in contact with our 50-day moving average. We are so extended by those tech giants that continue to draw these indexes higher even though the majority of those uh, stocks in the S&P 500 are not enjoying that same kind of bullishness. If we take a look at QQQ, well QQQ very very bullish continuing to run to the upside and I think if the bulls find inspiration today we may be looking at a retest of these highs or even new blue sky highs here in the QQQ. I think there's every reason to believe that. Big tech continues to be the the stocks, those tech giants continue to be the ones doing almost all of the lifting here in these indexes and um, see no sign that they're going to change that just yet. If they do, however, find some kind of inspiration here in the market to see those bears come in, I'm going to look for a level right in here to be tested first. And if that were to break, probably coming back down here to test the support and upside trend here in the diamonds. Any pressure beyond that point, well, it gets a little bit, um, might get a little bit uh, nerve wracking for the bulls because breaking down below there, we might start coming into some gap fills and then we start seeking out some heavier areas of price support. Once again, here in the QQQ, extremely extended away from that 50 day moving average. And we're doing it with just a handful of companies that are moving to the upside where the majority of the index is pretty flat. If we take a look at our IWM, IWM, made a nice move yesterday and this is kind of a surprise to me i honestly was watching this for a potential short in here but iwm picked up nicely yesterday and trying to follow through today so what we're going to have to watch is we're going to have to watch this potential downtrend area here and the potential downtrend right up here in that chart now keeping in mind if those bulls find inspiration today we might pop right up in there really easily look at that resistance in the chart and then see if we can push on through pushing through there i'm going to go to that downtrend area of the chart and then beyond that we'll be up here retesting these highs that we have struggled with so much in iwm if the bears however were to find inspiration well you can see it wouldn't be all that hard to envision a pullback here today that would come back and test this level of price support breaking down below that level we probably start looking for some of these lower areas in IWM and breaking that. Well, I think we start looking at coming on down into some of this congestion area right in here and maybe even this longer term trend line. So watch that carefully here on the day. And I think anything is possible. If we take a look at our VIX, our VIX yesterday continued to show no fear in the market, despite the fact that volume was incredibly low, um, truly uh, almost holiday um, like volume yesterday. Noticing that we we're breaking that downtrend, um, um, coming back to see if we can hold that trend as support. Right here, we broke that upside trend. Looks like our next target is right down in here. If those bulls find inspiration, uh, continuing to push on down, we're really in complacency zone here in our indexes. Um, as we continue to see lots of stocks going sideways to down while just a handful are going up. And we're basing that off, uh, no fear here in the VIX. So interesting situation here overall. Let's take a look at our T20s. T2122, if you guys remember, T2122 was giving us that little hockey stick down here 
that I talked about on the bottom and suggest that a relief rally could be possible and we're getting that we pushed up here um, we ended by the end of the day pushed up above the 50% area here in the chart so essentially we're straddling a fence here this morning coming into these big data points and we're going to make that decision um, can't do what will we find inspiration to the upside or inspiration to the downside one of the things we should keep in mind it's about equal um, for that those potential moves so if we do get really excited here in the market um, by the bulls or the bears look for some pretty big point moves to occur in the market. And then if we take a look at our uh, T2108, um, the percentage of stocks above the 40 day moving average, this actually was moving down earlier in the day, but then picked up um, as we started to rebound and recover here. So a uh, nice little relief coming back up in this chart, but I gotta tell you that really wasn't impressive. Um, and we saw such low volume. Um, pretty hard to um, really read a whole lot of you know yeehaw information in um, that move but if those bulls find inspiration today I see that possibly we can break that downtrend and if the bears find inspiration today I think we could seek some new lows here now keeping in mind only about 33 34 percent of the stocks holding above their 40 day makes kind of a tough case to say, man, we are really a bullish market. Um, same thing is true with T2107. Now the T2107 percentage of stocks above the 200 day also caught a little bit of lift after being flat to down first part of the day. So let's keep an eye on that and just keeping in mind, we have these downtrends in play. Right now we've got just above 51 almost 52 well 51 and a half percent of the stocks holding above their 200 day again pretty tough to say we have a uber or super bullish market when only about half of our stocks are holding above their 200 day moving average so keep an eye on these resistance levels here in the chart and then the one that really was shocking yesterday was t2101 our market breadth um, absolute market breadth continued to collapse and i mean collapse yesterday really fell hard you can see we've taken out lows of june august september period here in the market we're down here in a very low area of market breadth um, we'll want to watch that pretty closely now today could change this dramatically um, with the volatility we could see in the market uh, the question is will it be up um, in um, on a bullish run or will it be up on a bearish run uh, flip a coin and decide um, which way you think it's going to go let's take a look at um, our um, economic calendar here for today and it's what we've been talking about and what is going to be driving the market here this morning first off uh, this morning we've got Barkin that will be speaking and then we're going to be looking at the personal incomes and outlays you'll notice here the month over month consensus is suggesting that that's going to be increasing to 0.4 and we're looking at personal consumption expenditures um, coming in at 0.3, so a little bit of increase there. Now the personal consumption does worry me a little bit that that could miss, just simply because we're seeing the weakness that we've been seeing in the consumer. Watch that closely, but what most people are gonna be focusing on is right down here, um, they're hoping that we see that core PCE year over year um, coming in at a lower um, area at 2.6 is what the consensus is suggesting versus last time 2.8. If it does come in like this, we'll probably ignore the short term, look to the long term, and we might celebrate. So watch carefully here on that number this morning as we move on through. And by the way, remember that's coming out here before the bell. After that, shortly after that, we're gonna get the Chicago PMI. We've been continuing to see really, really ugly manufacturing numbers this week. Maybe we're gonna get a little bump here in uh, the PMI. They're looking for that to come up to 40. Remember anything under 50 is showing contraction 
Um, so a 40 reading, although it's improving, not exactly um, a, a bullish case for our economy. The next thing is we've got consumer sentiment and consumer sentiment. They're looking for that to try and increase a tiny little bit. If you remember this one um, actually decreased pretty sharply a last reading. So keep an eye on that. If the consumers are pretty unhappy, economy is usually pretty unhappy and they're looking for that inflation expectations to come in at 3.3 percent so watch those close after that we've got bauman we've got daily and we've got the baker hughes rig count and the uh, farm prices uh, a little later on in the day let's take a look at our um, earnings calendar and well, we don't have anything going on on the earnings calendar of note. There are no noteworthy um, reports um, all day long today, so nothing to worry about there on earnings. So how about we take a look at some stocks that uh, could be setting up for today. But before we do that, everyone, if you could do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could do me that favor, that would be click that thumbs up button, leave that brief comment. That helps the channel to grow. Thank you so much to everyone who does do that. And I just want to say thank you so much for all the kindness that everyone shows. Um, I truly, truly appreciate it. Um, and for anyone who shares um, these videos out on your social media me feed, thank you so much. That, that helps a ton. And you guys um, just humble me every day. So, um, yep, truly, truly appreciate the kind support. Let's take a look at a few of these stocks that could be setting up. And remember, everyone, we want to um, uh, make sure to follow your trading rules and your trading guidelines. You should never, ever blindly follow anyone else's trade ideas. You need to be doing your own due diligence. You need to be looking at your rules, your guidelines, your risk tolerances for every trade. You know, there's trades that I look at that I think are just absolutely gorgeous trades. But when I look at the risk to the stop, it's not my trade. Everyone has to make that decision. What is the right trade for you? Um, and it's okay. You, we're, we're not going to catch every trade in the market. So make sure that you find those trades that work for you and your guidelines. Well, first off, um, kind of interesting here. I want to be taking a look at what's happening here with our dollar uh, strength in the dollar and as you know I'm using the UUP here ETF for that but you can see that we have had a, a very strong strengthening dollar here um, that would usually mean commodity prices are going lower but not the case right at the moment so we've got a real interesting situation happening here where we've got um, bonds maintaining a little bit of elevation um, and yet the dollar continues to strengthen I think a lot of that has to do with worry uh, going on uh, for the Middle East. Um, all of these um, hot spots around the world that continue to crop up, um, very concerning. And um, a little strength in that. And then also the dramatic weakening of the yen having some um, impacts here on uh, the U.S. dollar. So keep an eye on that. If that continues to strengthen, it will be a little bit difficult for commodity prices to continue to run to the upside. But that being said, if we take a look at GLD, GLD is trying to break back through up here. I think we're going to have to put in some kind of pattern here for me to get too excited about it now make no mistake i hold physical gold i will always hold physical gold and um i i am a very big believer that gold is a great way to preserve your wealth but that being said we could rally right up here into this resistance in the chart and we could see a failure so be careful in chasing this i need to see this break higher i need to see this hold a higher low and then i might be interested in that chart but watch that carefully and i'm going to say the same right now with silver silver still struggling here and if i were to extend this 
downtrend we're trying to break out of that downtrend here we did get a good hold of this price support but now the next step is prove that you can hold some kind of a higher low to uh, um, start an upside trend watch that closely in a strengthening dollar doesn't give me a whole lot of confidence on that but we should be watching this pretty closely because a lot of volatility has been happening here and this uncertainty in the Middle East and things like that could really change the dynamics here in gold and silver. So be on point when it comes to those. Um, as you guys know, I have been paying pretty close attention to this CRM and CRM made a nice pop yesterday. I've been talking about that nice pop. Now we look for an opportunity for a gap fill here in uh, the chart watch for that to move on higher here um, if it does fill that gap and continues on here's your next resistance i think in the chart to be watching so nice little upside potential um, a little rest or pullback if this were to consolidate after popping out rest or pullback in here that would set up the next opportunity to the upside. So keep an eye on that. As you guys know, I've also been talking about NetApp and NetApp yesterday popped that alert about a dozen times. It popped and then pulled back and popped and then pulled back and popped and then pulled back. We had such a low volume day yesterday. So perhaps today's the day for NetApp to really start making some moves here. Keep an eye on that that move to the upside um, take a look at Adobe Adobe also had a really nice move yesterday popping through this little resistance area here in the chart stretching on higher now one thing I will say is what we have going on here is very very steep um, and usually something that steep has a tough time of maintaining too terrible long but Adobe making that move to the upside and I would suggest your next target is up in here at that next area of resistance in the chart keep an eye on that Adobe looking pretty darn good we um, saw some moves happening in Walmart yesterday and then it faded back we have that nice little morning star type pattern in here that um, I was looking for a potential follow through and it started to move and then that volume yesterday just kind of faded back and we're slipping back into this trend area but there is nothing bearish about that chart I'd be watching this closely for that next opportunity to stretch on up to the upside we saw some really mean and I mean mean price action here in Home Depot. We had that big surge up here in Home Depot. We smacked into this price resistance, tried to open up one uh, the morning um, last week, tried to gap above it and then completely reverse back down here to support area in the chart. Little concern here in this chart that this actually could fade into a, another short watch that carefully here on Home Depot and I'm going to say the same for Lowe's a little bit of a concern here Lowe's in a better shorting pattern if you ask me because we're back down below this trend in the chart so I would be watching that pretty carefully for that opportunity that we could catch some selling right in here and potentially fade on lower in Lowe's and with consumers weakening um, and it makes a little bit of sense so watch carefully on that uh, target boy target uh, breaking through this downtrend trying to hold in here for a higher low if this can continue to hold this area in here I think there may be an opportunity for that to perk back up but I have to tell you I have some concern here with what we've been seeing in some of these retail numbers here recently I am a little concerned about whether or not that's going to make that move or not. And if uh, Target is unable to hold this price support and slip back below here, well, I would watch for maybe some new lows to come into play um, on Target. So keep a close eye on that. When we take a look at energies, I think it would be a really good idea to be focusing in on some of these energy stocks that are really starting to show some um, power to the upside. Um, obviously not there in EQT, that's a potential short, but we're seeing some nice moves in ConocoPhillips breaking that downtrend, holding that higher low 
um, everyone can probably see this could be an inverted head and shoulders pattern starting to set up. So keep an eye on that if that can push on higher. If we take a look at stocks like um, Occidental, OXY, breaking that downtrend, pushing up here, trying to hold that higher low, breaking above some support levels in here, might want to start keeping an eye on some of these. You could see um, um, MRO trying to hold that pattern. It is tucked against that resistance, but let's watch and see if that can push on through here um, as we continue to see this concern about the Middle East. Watch those carefully. Devon, um, Devon another energy stock breaking that downtrend, trying to hold that higher low may have that um, opportunity to move on through to the upside. Now, UNG, when it comes to natural gas, not the, not the, the bullish case here. As you can see, we broke this support, completed this lower high. We're now officially in a short trend here on UNG. Watch that carefully, though. If we get some real fear happening over here um, in the Middle East, we could see that perk back up. But I'm going to be watching this carefully. Um, I think there's an opportunity that could occur uh, to the downside. And as you guys know, I've been keeping a pretty close eye on TLT on these bonds. If we are seeing the consumer weaken, and I believe we are, and if we start to make that belief, you know, for all of this time, uh, market makers and institutions have been trying to tell us, Fed's going to cut rates, Fed's going to cut rates, Fed's going to cut rates. And they've been saying that for a good 18 months, and they have been absolutely wrong. The data is now starting to move in the direction where I could really see sometime later this year a rate cut coming into play. If we continue to see those consumers weaken, which means people will start losing jobs and we're going to start to see some real pressure build in the market. And by the way, that's the purpose of raising rates to slow the economy. So when that begins to happen, if our big banks start to sniff out the fact that we are going to um, start cutting interest rates, I would be watching um, some bonds. And it doesn't have to be TLT. You could look at BND fund. You could look at the junk bond funds. But I would watch this carefully in here for that opportunity. Now, we're getting a little bit uncertain here in this chart. So we're not ready for prime time just yet. But I am holding a, a longer term position here and I'm looking to add. I'm just going to be waiting patiently for that uh, good pattern to show up here in the chart and I'll be looking for maybe some next upside here in TLT. If in fact we are seeing the consumer weaken, that will have ramifications across our economy with employment and other areas and um, that could um, inspire the Fed to finally um, relieve some of that pressure on the markets. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great results in your trading. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening. And as always, I want to wish you all the very, very best today and also a wonderful weekend. Take care, my friends, and I'll see you right back here bright and early Monday morning.